terms, the structure of what in NLP is called the tote model. And uh, because this, of course, is a, this kind of dy dynamic, outcome-oriented, feedback-driven model. I'll explain it, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> which we use to, uh, you know, to design things, to work with things when they're going, you know, a bigger or smaller. <laughs> That's had a great email from you. <laughs> I've got the two points. Actually, I was going to do it. Hi, <laughs> She's got it. <laughs> So in NLP, we have this idea that, um, and this comes from the sense of, uh, it comes originally from the work on guided missiles. So that's jolly nice. <laughs> <laughs> but also in a live thing, the same within a, you know, I heard this, maybe it's true, maybe it isn't, but I think it's a great metaphor, with whatever it is, is that, um, <clears throat> you know, international flights, whatever, a kind of, but uh, they're n only 98% or something on course. That the, the process of like flying a plane is this constant in-flight course correction. And so you've got this kind of sense that you've got like a kind of destination and then you're trying out. You're not necessarily just kind of mechanically, instrumentally, you know, technically getting there. That's what I'm saying, this is a rather mysterious area. But you are sensing and guiding and steering yourself and with others, you know, to more or less get there, <laughs> you know. And so you're using feedback, you've got a goal, and then you're doing stuff, and you're using the feedback to try and shape and guide enhance this, diminish that, do more of this, do less of that, do something different here, so that roughly, 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 you, you, you bring, as a, as a presenter anyway, you kind of bring your, your group home to the sort of, you know, port or whatever, you know, after a, a ride over the seas. I know I'm mixing metaphors here, so I'm in the sky, <laughs> boat, you know. Um, but it's got that sort of feeling of a journey that doesn't go in a straight line. It's a journey that is kind of being produced through the living of it, but it's not that you don't have a destination in mind. And so the idea of the tote model is various ways of drawing it. Um, Sometimes it's drawn like this, uh, which is that, so this is a sort of more technical way of drawing it, it is that there's a kind of test. It stands for test, operate, test, exit, which kind of tells you nothing, basically. There you go. There's nothing for free. Uh, but the test is like having some kind of goal that you have also put against certain evidences of success. So you're going, I want this and I'll know I've got it because I'll be seeing, there'll actually be stuff on the ground. Like if I fly my plane into the right airport, you know, well, literally there will be the sign, you know, I'll be able to kind of go, I won't just be going, well, where am I? You know, in a random place. No, I've arrived at Heathrow or whatever. <clears throat> uh, so the test is when it, it's. I always think of it a bit like sort of you know Bart Simpson in the back of the car in the in the Simpsons who keeps on going, "Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet?" You know, annoying little kid. But in a way, that's what's happening. You're going, "Are we there yet? Are we there yet?" Because. We, when where I am is the same as where I want it to be, there's no gap and discrepancy, then we've completed a tote. You know, so in other words, I have a goal, I have a destination, I kind of know what it's going to be like when I get there. I start doing stuff, and the doing stuff is what's called oper the operations. In other words, it's actions, it's steps, so I start doing things to get to my goal, and I go, am I there yet? Am I there yet? If it's no, I go back and do more of something. And I'm constantly kind of looking and testing. Am I on course? Am I there? 
what else do I need to do? And it's got this, and then when I get there, then I move on to the next thing, exit. <laughs> so it goes kind of test, operate, test, and exit. So you've got this sense that you've got this outcome-oriented kind of way of thinking. I'm trying to achieve something. <coughs> and I'm gonna like run, I'm gonna step in and do stuff and keep testing, you know, am I there yet? Am I there yet? And I'm going to obviously shape and be guided by the kind of feedback that I get. So in other words, this is outcome orientation, this is feedback that I'm paying attention to, and this is having a sort of flexibility of means to get there. Now, this, this sounds very, very simple, but you'd be just absolutely amazed, and I know I'm sure all of you that work in corporate situations, funny enough, I've just been working with someone who's been sort of working with, interestingly, audits, <laughs> And looking at who, doing some modelling, I've been in the background really, but they've been doing some modelling, sort of who are the expert people. And the expert people think in these more dynamic ways. And they pattern and look for information that is, that is organised in these more dynamic ways. And the people who aren't very good at it are just following the form. And so they're getting everything that was required of them, but it never quite adds up to a really thorough job, you know, because, because, because they've only looked at operations. And we see the same thing in terms of target culture. You know, this is how we get, you know, ambulances sort of like waiting in the car park because the target culture in A&E is four hours or whatever. So you've got these like real weird holdups in the system. So on the one hand, people want to fix the means, but that nearly always has the law of unintended consequences, which is that you then don't get your goals. And very often in organizations, this is the problem, <laughs> that people are not goal-oriented, or even in a training situation, that people go, well, I'm just going to get through my material. <laughs> I remember once I was doing a training, a train, I will not say where, it was like sort of in a corporate situation, and it was about 20 years ago. And there was this guy who I really thought was a hilarious laugh, actually. He was really, really funny. He just said to me, look, Judith, he went, they learn, you know, I do it, they don't learn it, down to them. <laughs> <laughs> I had never in my whole life ever thought of teaching like that. <laughs> you know, there was like no interest over how are people learning and how can I make this clearer and how can I redesign this so that more people are successful. Or all of the questions I'm asking myself all the time as a trainer. So how can I do this so people can get it, you know? Anyway, so this is like a tote. And it's having an outcome, knowing the evidences, starting to look at some of the steps, looking at if things don't just go according to plan, what sort of downside planning might I already put in place? What else can I be looking for to, to be able to do? Um, such like do that. And in terms of things like a presentation, you know, you'll have a, you know, a presentation will be, you know, well, <laughs> you know, what do I want to achieve? It's like, you'll have all these contextual things about for whom, who's there, what's the purpose of it, you know, what does it want to achieve for itself, what do I want people to go away knowing and thinking and feeling? All of those kinds of things, what are my evidences going to be? Because again, this is one of the things with the little happy sheets on trainings and presentations, that people can kind of tick their boxes, but you know, how are you going to calibrate? What sort of evidence is quality evidence of feedback? We're going to get into this later in the day. There's a very big issue about feedback with performance. Like what is useful feedback? And what is random, you know, somebody was in a bad mood, or, you know, the heating wasn't on, or, you know, whatever, that actually kind of wasn't necessarily useful for you. Um, <clears throat> so, so, so then in a presentation, you then got your operations, you know, well, 
you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about these kinds of things, I want to talk about them in these kinds of ways, I'm going to sequence in kind of like a little story or a little video clip or a little exercise or I'm going to use questions or I'm going to like do, you know, like a million, you know, death by thingy uh, point, PowerPoint, you know, people. <laughs> I want to extinguish all motivation in my team. <laughs> We're going to get through a hundred slides in 20 minutes. You know, it's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so we're looking at that. So, how, so then this is like the design aspect of it. You know, how, what will I do? What will I, what will I put in place? And then while you're actually doing it, of course, then you've got like a million choices. Because this whole system is producing messages and meta messages and you know meaning you know in mul at multiple levels in a live kind of way. Uh, even my outfit is you know even my earrings you know I mean things are messages to others about something about the context about the relationship about the seriousness of something, the meaning of something. You know, everything you do and say kind of adds up to a something mm -hmm. that you can't always put directly into language. But people know it when they experience it, and they know it when they see it, and they sense it, and they hear it. Mm -hmm. So. Um